Hi, and welcome to Knit All The Things. My name is Laurel, I'm also known as West Maven on Instagram, Ravelry, and here. If you're new, this is a space where I talk about all the things I'm knitting, all the things I want to knit, all things yarn, just all the things. And if you're returning, welcome back, Knitting Bestie. I can't wait to catch up with you. In this week's episode, I have three finished knit items for you. I finished my No Limit sweater, a pattern by Larky Bagger. This was supposed to be done for my birthday, but did I finish it in time? Guess you'll find out. I also have a cowl that I cast on and finished as well as my Rose City Yarn Crawl haul to share with you guys. So grab your knitting, get cozy, and let's go. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the book Close Knit by Larky Bagger. And we're gonna do this first because I want to talk about this and then share my experience making one of the patterns in here. So this book is really great. It was written by Larky Bagger, who is a knitwear designer that is from Denmark. And she really, really does a wonderful job. This, this book is really amazing. And let me tell you some of the things that I really loved. So part of the book is broken up into different sections. In the beginning part of the book, she shares basic knitting techniques, like how to knit, how to purl, what a selvage edge should look like, and all those types of things while knitting. So in that way, I think it's really great for a beginner. However, we'll come back to that in just a second. The other thing that she shares in this book, there are 15 patterns. There is, that includes sweaters, cardigans, tops, pillows, socks, scrunchies, jackets, a kid's sweater, a kid's cardigan, and a kid's dress and more. So there's a lot of different patterns and different kind of genres of patterns. So there's definitely something that you could find in here that you would want to knit for sure. She has shared the techniques that she uses for her like special look. So she definitely has a look to her knitwear and she really goes through and shares like how to kind of make something that's going to feel like you, but also have that look that she has. So her three techniques that she goes over in the book are called the ATS technique, which is based off of the All Together sweater. This is a free pattern that's on her Instagram. And she put it out during the pandemic. It's short for Alone Together sweater. And so she has a technique, which is the one I used for my sweater, where you kind of have little scraps of yarn throughout, but not the whole thing. Then she has an all over scrap technique, as well as the bad idea technique. So those three techniques are featured in this book and she tells you exactly how to do them for each pattern. So if you were to select uh, the, there's a t-shirt in here if you were to select that, there's three different little things that say if you want to make it with the like ATS style, this is what you're going to need. If you're going to make it for the bad idea, this is what you're going to need. Um, so there's definitely all of that. She also has uh, harder techniques or different techniques such as beat, adding beads to garments and stuff like that. So there's a lot of information in this book. So is this a book for a beginner? I would say yes, yes. So here's the like one like, footnote or one thing I will say about that. So in order to knit one of the patterns in the book, from my perspective, if you are a beginner or like a really, really beginner beginner, I would suggest actually reading the book. So the first, I don't know, three or so chapters is all of the techniques and the techniques that she uses. Now let's say you, and it's like casting off, casting on stitches, like finishing, how to knit, how to purl, what does a swatch or a tension square look like, all those types of things. So reading the first part of the book, I think is really important to get the most out of the whole thing. Also, if you are just like not gonna do that, but you wanna knit one of the patterns, in the pattern, it will suggest like the page that maybe she's referencing, like let's say it's casting off, for example, it'll say, like this instruction is located on page whatever. So you can always go back to uh, the different different techniques if you need to, but I would suggest reading it because she does things maybe a little, a little bit differently than maybe everybody does. So I think you will get a little 
bit of knowledge if you do read it. And plus she's very entertaining to read. So from that perspective, I think that would be my one suggestion if you're a brand new knitter and you wanted to knit something from this book. Um, okay, so I chose to knit the No Limit sweater and here is a couple of examples of what that looks like. So here's what I'm talking about. This is the all over scrap technique. This is an ATS, which is basically the type of technique I did. And this is the bad idea technique. So there's the three different techniques shown. You can do this in a turtleneck or a crew neck, and you can do it with the beginner style sweater, which is this one, or you can do a more experienced knitter, which gives it uh, short rows at the bottom. So those are the kind of different uh, things that you can change. So with mine, let me grab the sweater. So for mine, I decided to do the ATS kind of scrap technique, which is where you basically just add scraps wherever you feel like. You're not adding scraps the whole entire time, but you're just kind of putting them in where you feel they might be nice. And I'm a micromanager, so that was a little bit difficult because as you can see, like I didn't make them matchy, 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 but they certainly have like things that are similar. And I tried to like mirror a little bit without going overboard. Like there's a white stripe here. So on this sleeve, there's one up here. So I did try to like have similarities so it wasn't completely just jointed, but that's kind of how I decided to do it. So I used completely scraps. I didn't have any new yarn in this and I did the experience version. So how you knit that is you cast on your stitches. You don't do the hem, you cast on stitches and then you start working short rows. And then after the short rows are done, you, you start knitting in the round and then you knit the body. I started knitting in the round and then there's a point where you do some decreases, which I did, and then I stopped so that I could finish knitting the hem because that was really bothering me for some reason. I really felt like I needed that to like be able to visualize the whole sweater. So I ended up knitting the hem and then I started actually knitting the sleeves. And for the first sleeve, I knit through the increases and then stopped. And then the second sleeve, I knit through the increases and realized I'm just gonna finish that sleeve. And then I went back and finished the first sleeve. And then I finished the body joined everything in the round, then you do raglan decreases, and then you start knitting flat again once you're finishing up the neckline so you're getting more short rows for the, the shaping of the neck. So that is basically how you're kind of knitting this. I was going to do the turtleneck version and if you watch my uh, YouTube shorts, I have a bunch of like each day I was checking in and I was planning on doing the turtleneck version. However, I was done knitting the sweater. It got really heavy when I was doing the neckband. So I was not enjoying the process of holding everything and just trying to finish it. I know that probably if you were to consult the knitting PT, uh, she, I'm sure she would say like, put it on a, something so it's like being supported, but I didn't. So I was just getting kind of tired of doing it. And it's also twisted rib. And I decided after knitting for a while that I was going to do a little bit longer neckband than the pattern recommended, but I was not going to do a turtleneck. And so once I decided that I actually stopped purling through the back loop and I just purled. So I d ended up doing like a half twisted rib for half of it because I you don't need it. It doesn't matter, it's on the inside. So that's what I ended up doing. And then you end up crocheting the neckband down. I do like how it turned out. I'm not wearing it today because I do think I lightly steam blocked it and that made a big difference, but I really wanna like soak it and block it and it's a very thick, heavy fabric. So I'm gonna wait because I knew there's no way I could get that done and do the podcast. So I will end up really blocking it and I'll probably wear it next time. But I really do like how it turned out. 
I certainly was a little bit nervous when I was trying it on for the neckband and feeling how it fit, but with the blocking or the steam blocking, it did relax. So I'm hoping that it does just a tiny bit more and then I will really love it. The yarn that I used really was like deep stash. I used a, I don't think the yarn company is around, but I think it was called Blue Moon Fibers or something. I had a giant skein of something from them and I don't actually, I think it was some sort of wool. I don't know if it's superwash. I don't know if it's non superwash. I have no idea, but that was the, the like charcoal gray that you're seeing. I had used part of it for a scarf at one point in time. I think I had two skeins of it and I only used like one. And so I had that. And then I also had, I know that there is like a Barocco vintage in here as well, just in black. And that has some nylon or it's like half nylon. So there's not really any sort of rhyme or reason. This particular yarn is a like hot pink and purple and black is a cashmere blend of yarn, but I don't remember where it's from. It's like some random one. And I know that like this, I made a, uh, is a La Bienname, the red, and the sparkle is from just like having it in stash. So I have a silver sparkle and a black sparkle. I think it really adds a nice touch to the sweater. I really like in person, it's really fun to me to have like the shiny bits on such a like kind of black sweater. There's also some blues and some purples, but I mostly stayed with like red and silver as my like story. And then here and there did some blue and some purple. And I really do like how it turned out. I think if I were to do this differently, I don't know. I would really like to try the all over scrap technique. I think that that would be really fun to do. And how you do that is you create a ball of, it's called like a magic ball where you just knot various links of yarn and you just go. And I think that would be really fun. Um, I have enough yarn for a second one. I'm sure that I do. This is a heavy sweater. I knit it probably heavier than necessary, but the gauge is 11 by 17, which is so huge. I ended up using a US size 11 needle to get that gauge. And I don't think that, I think I would do it maybe differently. Maybe I would figure out my own gauge, maybe make it a lighter version of the sweater and then go from there and just choose a size accordingly now that I've done it once. Um, but I really do like how it turned out. And yeah, I can't say enough good things. I'm really excited to share what it looks like on with you because I know that that really helps like visualize. It has an interesting shape. The shape of the body is more of a pear shape, which is actually flattering. I wasn't sure I was going to like it on me, but I do think it can look really nice. So it's it's different. It's really different. I'm glad that I did it. I've been really curious about knitting one of her patterns. I do know it's not out for pre-order yet, but she will have a second book coming out in English at some point. And so I wanted to do this because she has a houndstooth pattern that I think looks cool and I wanna make. So it was a good experience. I'm glad that I did it. I am glad that I was able to use so much of my scrap yarn. Unfortunately, I have a lot left still, so maybe I won't make something else, but I really enjoyed this knit a lot. Um, I can only, I'm not a very experienced bottom up knitter. I don't know if it's common to do the short rows shaping in the bottom and the top, but I did find that interesting and I do think that it is a flattering fit. It is also something you can consider when maybe casting on for a different sweater if you wanted more of a high-low hem. I do think that you can take a lot of things away out of this book even if you don't want to knit any of her patterns. If you if this is not your style or your vibe, you can take a lot of things out of the book. Like exam for example the like high-low hem if you're doing a a bottom up sweater. I think you could easily do that for uh, many different versions of sweaters and 
use it as a way to create looks that are really going to speak to you. Um, I think that you could use the techniques, the scrap techniques that she uses for other patterns for sure that maybe you like the fit of or you know you love the fit of now. You could use that to, you know, make it your own. So there's a lot of ways to use this book even if you don't want to knit any of her patterns at all. I do think that with all of my leftovers it would be really fun to do one of the pillows and have one of the pillows as part of the decor. Yeah, so close knit. I do think if you're a beginner it's great. If you're experienced it's great. I really really can't speak more highly of it. Uh, the finished sweater weighs 731 grams, so it's heavy. It, I knit the size two in the patterns, so it is, it has positive ease on me, but it's not like my usual super oversize. Uh, and I really think that it, it fits nicely. I think it's a good fitting sweater. Okay, so when I was reading the patterns, I at first felt a little bit confused and that was because I was rushing to get this done. So as I said, I was trying to finish this for my birthday. Did I finish it for my birthday? What do you guys think? I did not finish it for my birthday. I actually, uh, on March 7th, which is, which is the day before my birthday, I had started the neckband and I just was like, I can't get this done. Cause I thought I, at that time, thought I was gonna still do the turtleneck. And I thought there's no way I'm just gonna go to bed. Um, and then the next day I did other things. And then in the, that evening I did actually finish it. So it was finished on my birthday, but I did not wear it. So I will be blocking this and hopefully you guys will be seeing it on the next podcast. And just real quickly, I'm not gonna talk about this in detail because I've already done a few, um, podcast episodes about it, but this is the Champagne Cardigan, a pattern by Petite Knit. And I've been living in this, and so I felt like it's comfortable, I'm gonna wear it. So, Close Knit by Lyric Eat Bagger. I will link this book below, but you can also find it probably in your local bookstores and your local yarn stores. Okay, so I finished the Mini Take Heart, a pattern by Fiona Alice, and it is found in the book mini palm. It's really weird because I actually don't normally knit out of books, but for whatever reason, I did a bunch of knits book. So it's the the cover hat and I made this for my youngest kid and he chose this color. This is La Bienne May's Wensleydale in the colorway Royal Blue or Blue Royale. I can't remember which, which way it is, but it's a really, really, really amazing color. So I gave this tip last time, but I'll say it again really quickly. If you're making a pom-pom with yarn, my biggest number one tip that I can give you is use waxed cotton cord to tie it and secure it um, together. Once you've done all of your wrapping and you've cut it and you need to tie it, use wax canvas that will, or waxed cotton cord and that will hold it really well. So I made this for my son. I basically, how I attach them is put a button in and then pull the cord through the button and then tie it on. My son ripped it off. He like worked on it. He was twisting and twisting and twisting it, twisting it the other way and like ripped it off. I don't know why, <laughs> but I was able to fix it and get it back on there, but it also meant that I had to um, trim this pom-pom a little bit more than maybe I would have. So it, it looks fine, I think. There's still, it's a little bit less amazing than it was when I first made it, but it's not bad. It has beautiful cables and this hat goes by really fast. There's quite a bit of twisted rib going on, but once you get done, you're doing cables, which is super fun. And depending on the size, it's how many repeats you're doing. So I made the largest size for my kids. I made a second one. And this is such a fun pattern to knit. I really think it is so cute on. 
it's a really really just beautiful hat it also comes an adult size not in the mini palm book but it comes in an adult size fiona alice has a take heart i think ebook that has the pattern in it that way so that is the Many Take Heart by Fiona Alice using La Bienna May's uh, Winsleydale, which I really want a sweater out of this. It is so, the yarn is so nice. It is so nice. I really, really loved it a lot. So then I had finished the hat and I had been enjoying having a small project that was on like a DK weight project. And so I ended up casting on the DRK Everyday Cowl. I am used Hugh Loco yarn, her Merino DK in the colorway Hustle. This is not available anymore, but she does have another colorway called Candied that I feel like gives the same vibe. So you could find that on the Hugh Loco website. Um, this is the very first time that I have knit one of Andrea's cowls and had it like click for me. And I don't know if it's because this is now my fourth. I think this is my fourth one. Yeah, I think this is my fourth cowl that I've made, not DRK every day, I've made three shifts. But it finally clicked like what I am doing. <laughs> so I'm not having to like stare at the pattern and try and figure it out. For whatever reason, the knitting on the bias cowl is so confusing in my head, but I finally felt like I got it. So because I have two kids, I finished this one and I will be making a second one for my other son. I would try it on, but last time I had like the weirdest hair after I did the podcast. <laughs> I put things on and wasn't looking, so I'm not gonna do that. But it's really cute. This is the second size. So she has toddler, child, small adult, large adult. And so this is the child size or team. It's either, it's what, it's the second size. And it's a pretty good size cowl, so if I didn't want to mess up my hair, then I could put it on and show you, but I could wear it. And I really, really like it. I think the colorway is really fun, and it's just super easy to memorize. I really couldn't say more about it. I really, really like it a lot. And yeah, it's a fun one. It's really just an easy, fun cowl. So that is the DRK Everyday Cowl by Andrea Mallory and using Hugh Loco Merino DK. In the time between last time and now, I have been working on a shawl that I actually forgot to show last week because I just, I feel like I had a lot to show anyway. But this is my, I'm trying to think of what the name is. It's a Stephen West shawl called the Smocket Shawl. And this is the top edge. I'm pretty sure it'll look better when it's blocked. But I'm using my hand spun. I'm using fibers from Banshee Fibers that I spun. It's a rambolet. And it's turning out really nicely, I think. The, it was a gradient braid. And I really, I think I did a pretty good job for my first like 100 gram spin, if you will. Uh, and I really think it's nice. I do think that the main stitch pattern is very similar to the Traveler series, which I'll talk about in a minute, but I do think it is similar. So Andrea Mowry used that for her Traveler shawl, shell, cowl, I'm sure there's cardigan. And I really think that it is a really nice for hand spun. And I didn't actually know that 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 this was similar to that, I actually thought it was different. I thought this was gonna be garter stitch, but once I got going, I realized it's it's not, but that's okay. I do anticipate this taking me a while only because after you're done with this, you pick up and then you knit a like rib and smocking stitch. And I feel like you have a gazillion stitches on your needles and I think that's gonna slow me down, but who knows? By then I'll be almost done, so maybe not. But that is my smocket shawl and I'm making some progress. I think last time I had like only done this much. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Next up is what I'm going to be knitting. Let's talk about what I'm going to be knitting next and then we'll do yarn haul stuff. So what I'm going to be knitting next, I think, 
I have to swatch for it, but I think I'm gonna be doing the Eva cardigan and pattern by Petite Knit. This is a fairly plain cardigan. It has some, I think, double ribbed button bands and cuffs. And I'm going to be making it, I think, out of this yarn. This is Uchiwa by Noro. And it is a cotton silk viscose silk blend. My husband got this for me for Christmas. I have two balls of this and it's a lot of yardage. It's like 500 plus meters. So it's a lot of yardage and I've been wanting a cardigan, another cardigan, maybe a lighter weight one will be nice. So we'll see. I'm not 100% sure on how this is going to turn out. I did look to see if anyone just used any Noro yarn on it. And I haven't seen that, but I have seen a couple that have used Noro just for various cardigans. The yarn itself is supposed to be worsted weight. It doesn't seem like it to me. The pattern is a DK weight pattern. So I may cast this on and find that it is just really not going to work for it. I don't actually know. So I will be swatching for that soon. Um, but I'm excited to get another cardigan because I wear this one all of the time and the weather is about to turn warm. And so having maybe a warmer cardigan might be nice. The second thing I talked about last episode was casting on for the Pina Colada sweater. The Pina Colada sweater was featured in issue 45 of Pom Pom Magazine, and it is this sweater that has two yarn weights that you use in Tarja to create the effect. So, so you have two yarn weights to create this kind of effect. I'm really excited to do this. I re-swatched because the first time I swatched it was looking so sloppy and not good that I really was thinking this is not going to work for me but I did re-swatch and it's looking good I think I got gauge everything's kind of starting to fall into place with it so I will be starting that soon I will be using Yarn Nouveau their sport base in the colorway Sapphire and Isayer's Alpaca 1 for the, the, the lace wig. So that's what I'm gonna be using, kind of a black and blue sweater. I think this is going to make a really nice spring knit because I don't anticipate it being overly hot sweater. I think it's gonna be pretty lightweight and easy to wear. So I am looking forward to this. So that is going to be cast on. It was going to be my birthday cast on, but I never finished this other sweater. So it wasn't, but that will be the next like cast on sweater. Okay. So that is all of my sweater knitting and knitting knitting. The next thing that I wanted to share with you, two things. So right now in Portland is the, the Rose City Yarn Crawl. And so I'm going to share my haul with you with that. But before I do, I had purchased this bag, this knitting bag from Katie Did Bags, and I just thought it was so fun. Roses and Skulls. She just ha started a new website, so go check it out and I'll put all that information below. But it has a nice little cute handle and the inside is black, so you're probably not gonna be able to see, but it has pockets, which I don't know about you, but I really, really, really love having pockets in my knitting bag because everything falls to the bottom and you can't find it so I always have like my notions pouch or something in the pockets so that I can actually find what I'm looking for and so I thought it was so nice and it's a drawstring bag it has like a faux leather on the bottom so it sits nicely I just really can't say enough they're very high quality bags and I just love the I love the skulls I think it's really really nice so please go check out her website. This is again, I purchased it, it's not sponsored, but go check it out because I, I really think this is gonna become one of my new favorites. I do think you could fit a substantial amount of yarn in here. I can fit just carrying, I would say a three skein project, might be a little bit tight, but maybe not. I thought it would be really good for 
uh, summer knitting. So if you're making like a tank or a tee, I'm sure that would easily fit in here or a shawl would be nice. So it is a good size bag, but I always f find different bags hard to judge, especially on a website. So I thought I would share that with you. But Katie did bags and I'll put her link below. Okay, so it's yarn. I keep saying yarn city. It's Rose City Yarn Crawl right now. And so it started on Thursday. Today's Saturday when I'm filming this. I'll probably actually go to some more stores, but for right now, this is what I've got. So I thought I would share my haul with you guys. I went to Naughty Lamb and they had a Yarn Nouveau trunk show. Do you remember? Yarn Nouveau. I got this at Flock Fiber Festival, so I was already familiar with their yarn. But I got this five skeins of yarn. I'm going to try and hold them all up together if I can. Okay. I bought this five skeins of her merino cashmere nylon blend. It's a DK weight and I am going to I think cast on the Feel Good Shawl by Andrea Mowry. So Andrea has a yearly knit along called the DRK March to May knit along. If you're not familiar, you can knit any of her sweaters or shawls and she has a Ravelry group and a hashtag and it's super fun. The Ravelry group is very chatty, which I really like and very inspiring. So I am possibly going to cast this on. I don't know if I would get it done by May, but I really, really loved these colors and the feel good shawl is a Brio shawl and it just looks like it would be so squishy and like amazing and I just love Yarn Nouveau's colors but these ones really spoke to me. This one is called Ironwood and then let's do this one is Willow. It's like a nice kind of greenish brown and then we have Finch and then this one is Wildwood. And then we have Victoria. So these are just amazing colors. I was super lucky. Um, Nicole Professor Pearl on YouTube and I met up and we were able to shop a little bit and it was just really nice to be able to like hang out with her because we message a lot of times on Instagram but we were not always able to like hang out and actually chat so it was so nice to sit down and have a coffee with her and chat and then go a little bit yarn shopping so that was really nice that was from Naughty Lamb then I did go to another store, but did not make any more purchases on that day. And yesterday, my birthday, I went to Ritual Dyes and Ritual Dyes had a Mork made fiber trunk show. I ended up getting some bats of fiber. I saw Mork made at Sacred Sheep Festival and at the time did not buy any of her bats, but I made up for it. <laughs> So don't you worry. So I got this one because I thought my one of my kids would really love it. it. Has like blues and whites and then this neon green and yellow with some orange silk and Firestar and Merino. So I thought that would be really super fun. Then I got, my youngest was with me, so he picked out a bat that he liked, and so he picked out this one, which is like a purple with pinks and greens and blues and oranges, and it has Firestar as well, a lot of sparkle in there. And this one is also a merino. Merino, silk, and nylon, Firestar, sparkles, Angelina, all kinds of things, and silk. And then I had this in my hand and Becca who works at Ritual Dyes came up to me and she's like, black, huh? And I wasn't gonna get it, but I was, I was like, yeah, I should get it because it's something I really love. So it's like black and neons and purples and I really thought it was really cool. There's some blue. So I think this one will spin up fun too. So those are the three that I picked. They're all merinos and uh, silk and like, 
Firestar, Sparkle, Angelina. So those are the three bats that I picked up. I'm really excited. Like I wanted to come home and immediately like drop everything and only spend those. I'm trying to use a little self-control. I know it's going to be so fun and I might need little breaks from my project I'm about to show you. So that's all of my like haul for now, but the day is still young, so you never know. Okay, so I've been talking about spinning for the DRK Spin It to Knit It Traveler Knit Along. And so I had some, some braids already and I purchased a couple more to like round out my colors. So this is going to be kind of like one color story. It is uh, Lorelei, Beats, and Superstar are like one. And then I have Arabesque. This is the darkness. And then I'm about to start spinning this is Phantasm. So that will be my other one. So I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna go for a three ply and com combo spin with those. Who knows how it's gonna turn out. I really don't have any idea what I'm doing, but I'm excited to start. And so I like to follow the excitement because that is where I find my joy is when something's exciting. I do, however, make myself finish things that maybe are not bringing joy, but that's a whole, <laughs> it's a story for another day. So that is what I have been working on and what I plan on working on. So I wanna hear if you guys are knitting anything for any of the DRK, knit alongs and please share them with me because I really, really love seeing everybody's stuff. Um, if you are spinning for the spin it to win it thing, let me know. Um, otherwise I wanted to real quickly, I forgot and I'm going to forget, but I don't see my yarn. That's okay. I'll just tell you about it. I am started a new pair of socks, the cozy slouchy socks by me. And we are doing a knit along and it's going to be about a month long. I think we're going to finish it beginning of April. So I will leave some details in the directions or in the drop down below. So if you want to join us, please do. I'm really excited seeing everybody's cast ons. And I want to thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. You guys are amazing. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if we're not yet knitting besties. I hope that you make some yarn magic and until next time, talk to you soon. Bye.